Sup subs, this is Mateo311, and today I have a very special video for you guys. Today we're going to be covering multiple applications that allow you to play VR content on headsets it wasn't originally intended for, and in manners that it also wasn't intended to be played in. These applications include Revot, the Oculus Link, and Virtual Desktop, and we will compare them to a native Rift. I'm going to be covering a lot of information in this video guys. If you end up finding any of it useful, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and leave your comments below. I also have some through the lens video that has been supplied by my buddy Wishful. He is an amazing VR YouTuber. I will include a link below in the description. Now I do have some overall issues with through the lens comparisons in general, but I will get into that later. So we're gonna review the pros and cons and compare each one of these applications. Let's get into it. First up is Revive. Revive is a third party application designed to allow you to play Oculus exclusive games on non Oculus hardware. Now the obvious major benefit is the ability to override Oculus exclusivity and you have the option to use your preferred HMD. But the major downfall is compatibility. While top tier Oculus titles generally get additional attention from the Revive team and usually have day one support, it's rarely perfect. Weeks after launch, there is still no official version that supports Stormland, and even after two unofficial patches, the game is only now playable and there is still no multiplayer support. Some Oculus titles are actually never fixed, while others work flawlessly in Revive. Performance, controller support, and playability vary from title to title, and when Revive is at its best, you can have a superior experience to that of a native Rift S. But when it's at its worst, you can't even launch the VR title. Currently, Revive is an excellent tool for non-Oculus headset owners who want to experience Oculus exclusive titles, but it really doesn't go beyond that. Just to further emphasize, some of these compatibility issues that you will see in Revive, they may include graphical artifacts. You might see some significant issues with anti-aliasing or even depth rendering, which can be very jarring on the VR experience. I actually made a whole 10 minute video on how to get the best performance out of Asgard's Wrath while using a Valve Index, something you wouldn't have to really play around with with a Rift S. And while I now prefer that experience on my Valve Index rather than playing on a Rift, I still run across things like the grip controls being overly eager and I'm accidentally picking or grabbing stuff way too often. Now you can adjust your Steam VR control bindings, but this is just one added level of complexity that you wouldn't see while using a native Rift or Rift S. Now moving on to the Oculus Link. The Link is a combination of PC software and a specific USB cable that allows you to turn your Oculus Quest into a PC VR headset. Now this is official software from Facebook and you can buy an official cable, but third party cables also work quite well. Now the major pro to this application is additional functionality for your quest. Oculus exclusive titles that were once limited to the Rift and Rift S can now be played on the quest. This also allows you to bring Steam VR titles to the quest and games run in a manner that eliminates any type of software compatibility issues. Now the Oculus Link beta does currently have some hardware GPU limitations, but that should be corrected by the time this goes to full release. Now the major con of the Oculus Link is video compression and additional latency. The Oculus Quest does not operate like a typical PC VR headset. It runs in a completely different manner. There is no cable running from the PC's GPU to the Oculus Quest for video data. Instead, everything is transmitted via USB. Now this requires video compression. And while the overall execution is phenomenal, it does introduce a visual downgrade and a minor amount of latency. Now, if you compare it directly to a Rift S, the downgrade is noticeable, but not significant, nor is the amount of additional latency. While the latency is minimal, it's not ideal for competitive gaming. And if you're actually reviewing the footage on screen, it might be hard to see any significant differences. The most noticeable difference in image quality is the fixed foveated rendering. This is where the fidelity around the edge of the screen is lower than in the center of the screen. But overall, the image quality with the Oculus Link is actually quite amazing. 
Now previously I mentioned an issue with through the lens footage and that's mainly because there are so many factors at play that make this footage really hard to analyze. Now by the time you see this actual video, the video being shown has been compressed and re-rendered multiple times. We're also relying on the quality of the camera that was used to capture through the lens and we're not even going to touch on the subject of color accuracy and just the fact that color is an interpretation so some people may find an LCD screen or an OLED screen much more ideal for VR gaming. Overall, the visual fidelity of the Oculus Link versus the Rift S is very subjective. And this is why you may come across people who say the Oculus Link looks just as good as the Rift S or even better. From my limited testing, I think the Oculus Link looks great and it's very hard to notice a difference unless you know what to look for. Overall, the Oculus Link is a must have application for Oculus Quest owners who already have a VR ready PC. And again, this is not a separate application. This is built right into the Oculus software. Now the next application is Virtual Desktop. And this is a third party application that allows you to capture elements from your PC and bring them into VR. For example, you can place your Discord chat window inside your VR game. Earlier this year, Virtual Desktop enabled game streaming, which Oculus promptly disabled but is still available via sideloading on the Oculus Quest. If you're not familiar with sideloading, it's just installing non-official apps on your Oculus Quest. I know this sounds like it might be something bad, but trust me, it's not. It's simple and it adds a lot of extra games and functionality to your Quest. So if you go and sideload virtual desktop onto your Quest, you can stream PC VR games wirelessly to your Quest. Now I'm sure this sounds like an ideal scenario. You get to maintain your wireless freedom and play all of your PC VR games. The major downfall, however, is latency and compression issues. Personally, even under ideal conditions, I'm not happy with the performance of Wi-Fi game streaming. I've tested both ALVR and virtual desktop, and the latency just makes VR feel unplayable to me. I've also come across some other issues like being too short in a game or controllers not working correctly. Now your mileage may vary, and maybe I'm just a bit more sensitive to latency than some other VR players, but for me, Wi-Fi streaming just never feels right. Now a 5 gigahertz signal is highly recommended because if you're using a 2.4 signal, your experience is going to be even worse. Now virtual desktop game streaming and the Oculus Link in many ways are very similar. You are sending a compressed video image to the headset and sending back information regarding the position and orientation of the headset and the controllers. Now on the screen, I have been showing some comparison video, again, also captured from wishful but also once again this footage has gone through varying degrees of compression and re-rendering when wi-fi streaming fidelity wasn't actually one of my major issues it was more judder latency and the overall feel of vr now I recommend you just try out ALVR or even virtual desktop game streaming and see if it's for you. But I personally never use it. So lastly, we're just gonna discuss natively playing games on a Rift S. The pros are clear here. There is native support. Games have been developed for this headset. You're not going to run into any compatibility issues, no extra setup or third-party applications. This is clearly the user-friendliest method. You are, however, limited to the Oculus PC VR HMDs, and they are definitely on the lower end in terms of quality compared to many other HMDs on the market. There is a reason why the Rift S sells for $400, while the Index is $1,000 or the Cosmos is $700. The audio and visual fidelity of the Rift S is significantly lower than many other headsets, and while comfort is subjective, the Rift S definitely isn't one of the more comfortable headsets, at least for me. Many of the applications I've discussed in this video overlap in some categories, but none of them are exactly the same and they all serve different purposes. Now I have access to all of these tools and multiple headsets, but generally I try VR games, specifically Oculus exclusives in the following order. I start by testing Revive because I prefer the Valve Index as my daily driver. If it absolutely does not work, with the Valve Index or the artifacts or overall performance is unbearable, I will move on to my Rift S. 
If you do not have a Rift S, this is when I would say move on to the Oculus Link. And as I previously stated, I just don't use virtual desktop or ALVR for game streaming. I feel that the cons, namely the latency, just completely outweighs the benefit of having wireless freedom. But I'm sure not everyone is going to agree with me on this. Okay subs, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead, give me a thumbs up, leave your comments below. If you're new, consider subscribing, and I will see you guys on next time.